People are illegally summoning mountains. I'd love to hear your take on this here in the comments because this is an interesting one. We had areas of the national forest here in Southern California that were closed because of forest fires. And they were big areas, I think, probably to you know prevent other forest fires from happening. Some of them have since been rolled back and reduced. And I updated the maps I had made. I'll put links to those underneath the video. And for everything else I talk about here, I'll put links under the video as well. But there are still some areas closed that are popular that have not been damaged by the fire fires, Mount Baldy being one of them. Mount Baldy is a popular hike here in Southern California. And people are doing this hike illegally. They're going through these warnings in the beginning and they're going up to the summit and they're doing it sort of flying in the face of the Forest Service closure. There's a lively debate going on in online forums like subreddit for SoCal hiking about whether this is appropriate or not. For me personally, I'm not gonna do it because I don't know the larger picture and I'm not gonna break the law to go do a hike. And I have heard of people um, getting ticketed after the facts for going into closed areas. There are webcams and wildlife cams up there. I have no idea if people are watching or not, but they could be. But people are doing it anyway, and they're saying, you know, why is this area even closed? I cannot answer that question, but what I find interesting is that in the closure orders, there is an exception for private businesses. Now, there is a bungee jumping company at the bridge to nowhere. I made a video on this or a few videos over the years, but you can check out this video. It's a big bridge they were going to build for part of a highway that never happened or got washed away. And there's bungee jumping there. And if you go to the bungee jumping, you can hike through a burn area, not only a burn area, but a, an area that actually got burned, not just closed for a burn area, but actually got burned. And I think it brings up something interesting, right? Because the bungee jumping, I think, is leasing that area from the Forest Service. And I'm guessing you have to go with the guide. But the fact that it's not closed for them, but closed for other people, uh, I think rubs people the wrong way. So let me know what you think. And also rubbing people the wrong way. There's an area that just opened here called Chantry Flat. It's a really popular hiking area. It was closed for almost four years, I believe, because of the Bobcat fire. It just opened. If you go there, uh, not all of the trails are open. The Forest Service didn't put up and put out a map, but the local search and rescue team did. Um, I'll put a link to that under the video as well. Adams Pack Station is there. It's the oldest pack station here in Southern California. They run mule trains out to the private cabins to supply them. Go say hi, support your local business. But the parking lot gets full very quickly and traditionally people have parked along the road there's a wide shoulder and it was never a problem but evidently now uh you know this has been open for about a week or so the local law enforcement is already out giving people tickets so be careful there also not good news for the Forest Service. I saw that they are not hiring seasonal workers this year because of budget cuts. I'm guessing this whole situation will probably get worse before it gets better. Um, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. Just seems like it's all a bit of a mess. And talking about messes, we've had these hurricanes here and Starlink did something interesting. They got temporary FCC approval to offer direct to device texting for cell phones. And this is just, I think any LTE cell phone will connect in these areas via a Starlink satellite and allow you to send text messages over the satellite. So kudos for Star to Starlink for you know making that happen. If you're able to get that to work where you are, let me know. You should get like a little message or a little thing that has your connection as Starlink satellite, um, but very, very cool allowing people to communicate. And for those of you who were commenting on some earlier posts that I had about this, it's not the satellite dish you don't have to buy a dish this is any phone this is not internet service this is texting over satellite something completely different but interesting nonetheless also with the new ios 18 there is satellites texting and some people left comments in an earlier video that they were able to text from areas that didn't have service from uh, helene i believe also with ios 18 you can now do a video chat with 911 and rapid sos who i've also talked about in earlier videos is integrating this so that we can can get this rich data and video chats during a 911 call uh, through the 911 centers, which should be a big game changer. Also, if you have a Garmin Phoenix 8, I did a video on this, the ups and downs of this. I got a new watch face and new band. I'll tell you about that in an upcoming video. But there was a new firmware update that addresses a lot of the problems and also brought back the turn-by-turn -turn directions for navigation, which seems to be a pretty core thing for a Garmin, but was left out. But that's back there. 
Google Earth had some updates. They now have historical satellite photos, which is really cool. And also the new AI models are removing clouds from their satellite imagery. And if you haven't used the Google Earth satellite imagery, you can zoom down really low. It's incredible. I've used this to find old trails. You can actually access this in CalTopo if you didn't know that. I'm not sure if you need a paid account. You definitely need to sign up. But I've used this to find trails that are no longer on the map and just see if there's any kind of trace of them there still. Hurricane Helene has obviously done a number on the trails in the southeast. A lot of parts of the Appalachian Trail were washed out from landslides and tree falls. The Appalachian Trail Conservancy said that if you were doing it and you have to do a detour, you'll still be credited with completing the uh, AT. This is a popular time on the AT in the fall. So beware if you're going to go hike around the southeast. Also, I saw the Blue Ridge Parkway was closed in a lot of places, a lot of different washouts. They changed the name of Klingman's Dome in Great Smokies National Park, I think, to Kowohi, the Cherokee name. Uh, but anyway, in the southeast, lots of things hammered by Helene. Here in the west, Yosemite ended the timed entry reservation uh, program early, so you can just drive right into the park now. Also, the National Park Service is investing $255 million in local parks to help repair and maintain trails and access, so that is a great thing. Phantom Ranch is going to be closed for three months, so don't try to go there because it ain't open. And the cables came down on Yosemite. It was interesting to look through the comments because some people reported in the last few weeks before the cables came down that some of the poles were out of the holes and the boards were missing in between, which is probably very unnerving. If you've never done half dome cables before, the poles are not fastened into the granite. They move around and they can be pulled out. And the boards that you walk up are also just just sitting there they're not fastened down by anything sometimes i think there's little clips that hook them onto the boards but in general the whole thing moves around making it even crazier than it is just walking up that piece of slick granite um, so beware if you want to do that the permits come out i think in march i will let you know on this news uh, video or on that news video when that happens I was on the Trail Talk podcast talking about my 50 High Points adventure. You can check that out. I'll put a link to that under the video here. And I'm going to have a couple more videos on that series coming out in the next couple weeks. And also, I wanted to mention the Goes Health app. I did a video on that earlier. I just you know like the app and i found that i was not paid by them and i don't get paid by anyone i don't get free testers by anyone here i do that very consciously because i don't want to be influenced i don't want to have to say nice things about a company if they're not doing nice things but i really do like that app they just released an update to it it's kind of like a first responder type workflow to figure out what a problem is I noticed other people are doing videos on the Goes Health app. I don't know if they're getting paid or not, but I just want to let you know that I am not getting paid. I don't get paid and I won't be getting paid. I'm keeping this totally independent so that I can just talk to you hiker to hiker and let you know what the real deal is without getting muddled up with having to make a brand happy about um, you know, our relationship. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it. If there's something I should know about in the hiking world, including one of these videos, please leave me a comment and uh, I will check it out. Stay safe and I will see you out on the trails.